Here we have lights for the awning. You'll notice that that is on so that you to remind you that you've left it on. Then you have a porch light. You have a large light on the side of the unit, just another extra light for you. And then your primary living room lights, which turns off the main lights in the unit. Water pump switch is here. And these are the two switches for your hot water tank. We talked about outside. You can use it on electric or gas or both. You get a significant recovery if you run both at the same time. If the gas fails, there's a little light here that will tell you that it has not lit. If that does happen, the best thing to do is to turn it off, wait about 30 seconds for the computer to reset, and then try again. Also might want to check to make sure that your propane is in fact turned on. A great way of finding that out for sure is to go to your stove, especially after refilling your tanks. This gets the gas flowing into your trailer. So we can turn your element to light, turn the spark, and as you see, the propane lights. That's a great way of getting that propane flow from your tanks to your trailer. And now you know your propane's actually working. It's a great, great way to do it. Then go to your hot water tank, then start your furnace, etc. To, uh, to light your stove, it will not light with the sparker. You would use a barbecue lighter. You're going to turn the, the pilot button. I'm not going to do it now because I don't have a lighter. And you would push and hold with your barbecue lighter down underneath until the pilot light, which would be way in the back. You want to wait till the pilot light lights. Holding this until that pilot is well established. It might take about 20 seconds. And once that's done, you turn it to the into the burner mode. You'll see your burner ignite. If that fails, you will just need to start over. Nothing wrong with that. It's very common to have to do it once or twice. Now, the pilot is not something that's designed to be left on all the time. You light it each time you want to use the oven. Microwave is pretty straightforward. It works like a home microwave. Your light is here for above your stove and your vent for exhausting is above the stove as well in the bottom of the microwave. We can see that the refrigerator is at 34 degrees. So it's nice and cold. We've had it on so you can see that it's functioning properly. To operate it, you have three buttons here. I have it in the auto mode currently which is great because then when the computer in the fridge detects the power outside, it turns on to, to electricity when you power it on. If you were at work and the power went out, it's gonna auto switch over to gas, which is awesome. That way you don't have to worry about any food spoilage. Super great way to do it and very easy for you guys to operate. So we're gonna turn that off now so it's ready for travel. We can see that it was functioning properly for you guys. So you have two halves, you have a 110 half which is just like our homes, and you have a 12 volt half, not so dissimilar from our cars. <clears throat> These are primary breakers and they switch just back and forth just like a home breaker. You have a 50 amp, you have a 50 amp service, so that's your primary breaker would kill all 110 power. Over here we have our all our small fuses, and there's also a nice little window here so that when the 12 volts fail, you'll see an LED light up, telling you that, hey, I should pay attention, something's going on here. Um, very simple, good idea to have some spare fuses in the in the trailer, just on the off chance that you need one. And a little tool to pull them out because they can be pretty tight to grab. And here we have what we call a max fan. So we press the button to open it. You can see the vent opens. There is a cover over it, so you can probably leave it open most of the time other than the most horrid weather. Press the on button, and as we can see, fan is going very very quiet it's a really nice fan it will move a tremendous amount of air in your trailer it's a great alternative to running the air conditioning turning it off press the power off button this big switch here we didn't cover that is your ceiling fan you can see that going round and round that's another great way of circulating air in your trailer here we have an assortment of light switches for around the trailer and here we have your thermostat, which does your air conditioner and your furnace. So the first thing, we press the button, it wakes it up. Hit it again, we see auto, which is the fan mode. Then we have a snowflake for air conditioner. And then we have the furnace mode for the furnace. Right? And if you want to adjust the temperature, that's done here and here. And the furnace will auto light. I can hear it starting to kick in as we speak. Putting it away, 
game, we hit it one more time, we see the little word off at the bottom, and after a moment or two, it'll put itself to sleep, and then after another minute, the furnace will actually shut down, and then it won't come on again while you're not there. We're going to look at, at the bottom here, we've got a propane slash carbon monoxide detector. Now that is hardwired into your trailer, onto your main 12 volt coach battery. If for some reason your battery was really low and you're, you're offshore power, you're going to hear that thing chirp at you a little bit, just telling you that your battery was low. But you're living in it, so you're on shore power, so that's probably not going to be an issue. If it does start to go off, the, what you should do is just strictly exit the trailer, go to the front, close off your propane, wait for the beep to stop, then you can come back in and see if there's something obvious that was left on. Possibly an element was turned on on the stove as an example. Um, if everything seems good, you can turn the propane back on, start your life again, and if it doesn't go off, it was just an anomaly. If it goes off again immediately, again, repeat that process, turn off the propane, call your local Arbutus, one of the five locations, you're good to go. Over here we have the fireplace. Press the button, beautiful accent. Button over here is for temperature. Button here is to dim down to the setting you like. Again, powering it off, very simple. TV and stereo, pretty straightforward. Um, your recliners, you've got lots of individual lights for your eating area. The switches are here, over the couch, over the eating area. We can open the sink, show you that our water system is currently turned on. So we have water functioning, we're running on the internal tank using the water pump. You may be able to hear that, maybe not. Excellent. Above our head we'll see the regular household smoke detector, 9 volt battery in that. So you'll want to check that once or twice a year to replace that 9 volt battery to make sure that the smoke detector can do its job for you. Toilet. You have foot flush. It is a porcelain toilet. You press a little for water, all the way down for the trap to open. Flushes your toilet. Light switch beside me. This we want to look at. We have our GFI. Any outlets that are near water or on the outside will be tied to this GFI. This is your reset, just like a GFI would be in a household bathroom. If it trips, you press it here. If this doesn't fix the problem, then you would check the breaker in your control panel. You have another vent in your ceiling. This one is manual, so you turn the crank to open it, and then a manual switch to turn it on. Very straightforward. Again, it has a cover on it, so you would be able to leave it open most of the time in and, and inclement weather, which is nice. Light switch on the wall. You have a secondary thermostat here. This is for the secondary air conditioner, not for your furnace. Functionality is the same. You just won't find furnace settings in there. Uh, so you'll have to make sure that wherever you guys are putting this trailer, that you do have a full 50 amp service and not a 30 amp service hooked up. That would be recommended. The trailer will function on 30 if you guys aren't installing a 50. You just won't be able to use both air conditioners at the same time. That's important to know. Your bed is out because the slide is out, so you've got lots of room in here. You have latches here to get into your into your closet and I see a washer dryer unit in there which is nice you still got tons of room for your clothes awesomely uh, uh, fitted out uh, unit that you guys have got so one last thing to show you here your Arbutus pouch here contains all the manuals for the unit you'll have a one for the main unit and you'll have separate manuals for each appliance so they're by manufacturer, so dedicated manuals there. Also, you'll find remote controls and any accessories that were included with the trailer that the previous owner left behind for you guys. In here, we have a nice little folder with a generic manual here, which goes through basically a written version of the walkthrough that we're doing right now. We also have some little uh, leaflets here on moisture control, outfitting your trailer, mo uh, doing a um, moisture control and also uh, how to winterize your trailer in writing. However, YouTube nowadays is probably a little handier. Here we have your keys for your unit 
and we do have a checklist here and a little signature that we, we get from you when you actually come to pick the unit up just saying that uh, you understand the basic operation of your unit. You will find all these accessories available at five different Arbutus locations on the island. Most of them are recommended for your enjoyment of your unit and some of them are recommended for maintenance of your unit. They do not come with it, but they are a good idea to have some or all of these to take care of your trailer in the best way possible.